In recent weeks, I've been torn between family loyalty and the national interest. It's an unresolvable tension and time for others to take on my roles as MP and minister. Hashtag over and out. Holy shit! I honestly don't know what's worse there, betraying your Prime Minister brother because you think supporting him might be against the national interest, or doing it with a hashtag. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying I'm against hashtags, I'm just saying over and out is lazy when he had so many better options at his disposal. How about hashtag Bojo's bro bro Jojo says no more? <laughs> or hashtag Bojo to Jojo, oh no, say it ain't so-so. Or hashtag citing FOMO, Jojo goes no more Bojo. Or, or just hashtag hotter brother wisely abandoned sloppy idiots. <laughs> But wait, wait, because it gets one step crazier here. Because while Parliament has now passed that bill, forcing Boris to ask the EU for a Brexit delay if a deal can't be reached, he's indicated he may ignore that, which could trigger a legal and constitutional crisis. And with the Brexit deadline at the end of next month, Boris now suddenly wants an election. And if he can't get Parliament to give him one on his terms, he may, and this is true, call a no-confidence vote in himself. <laughs> It was a week so absurd. I think this commentator may have actually summed it up best. Nobody alive has lived through this kind of collapse of the way that governments operate. I still think we're going to see a general election, but, you know, I can't be 100% certain of that, <laughs> as I could hardly be certain about anything in politics. I just, to reiterate, chaos. Look, look, English me is right. I mean... <laughs> He, he missed the memo about losing the banks, but he's right. To recap here, we are no closer to a safe Brexit resolution than we were three years ago. There's discord in Boris's party. The wrong Johnson resigned. Boris is about to suspend Parliament, and no one knows what the fuck is going to happen next. All of which is really just a long way of saying, not a good start, Boris. Not a good start. And now, this. Yeah, I mean, that is a wider extreme than most of its ex experience in our daily jobs. For me, the difference between a good day and a bad day is whether there's hazelnut creamer in the break room or whether Janice from accounting drank it all again. God damn it, Janice! That's not even milk! That's disgusting! And that level of stress, combined with funding shortages, has caused dispatch centres to be understaffed. In fact, right now, go to Google, put in understaffed 911 dispatch and your town, and see what comes up. Because in many places, it will be headlines like these. It seems 911 staffing problems are one of those things a ridiculous number of cities have, like a Chinatown or a statue of someone racist. And, and if your local dispatch centre is understaffed, then when you call, the first voice you hear may be this. You have reached Memphis 911 emergency. All operators are busy, so please remain on the line. You have reached the Cincinnati 911 center. Your call will be answered as soon as possible. You have reached New Hanover County 911. We are currently experiencing high volumes of emergency calls. You have reached 911 emergency dispatch. Do not hang up. It's in danger. Lay down the phone and go to safety. Oh, oh, go to safety. Why didn't I think of that? Here I am in danger when really I could simply be going to safety. I shouldn't have wasted your time by calling in the first place. And some of that call volume is on us. The ubiquity of cell phones means if 50 people see a fire, 911 might get 50 calls. And that's on top of an even bigger strain on the system. Approximately 84 million 911 calls a year nationwide are butt dials. One person even butt dialed 911 136 times. When you're